income tax 2022-2023 standard deduction software example. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Here we are in our example form 1040, populating it with Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but if you have access to it, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also access the form 1040 related forms and schedules at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Our starting point here is that we have a single filer up top support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a youtube page we also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. This is gonna be Mr. Anderson. We have the address down below. We've got no dependents at the starting point, 100,000 on the W-2 income, just to have a nice round number. And we're focusing down here then on the standard deduction. So here is our focus. The standard deduction will be taken if it's greater than the itemized deduction. The use of the software is nice because uh, it'll allow you to kind of help to do that calculation, to help to do that kind of comparison and see which is the larger one. It'll typically take the larger one. The information on the left of the form here uh, tells you what the standard deductions are in general, unless you have that added standard deduction. If you're over a certain age, 65 and blind, then you can have the alternatives to them. So the single or married filing separately is of course that 12,950. There's the 12,950 here because that is the filing status we're talking about. If we went to married, and this is how I would try to memorize this, the standard deductions will change from year to year, but you wanna have a general dollar amount of what the standard deduction is on the single filing. And then when married, you would expect it to double, which it basically does here, it's to 25, uh, 900. So it's at 12,950 goes up to 25,900 for married. Because of course, if you're married, got two people together, you don't want to disincentivize people getting married. And therefore you would expect the standard deduction has to double, even though uh, you would think that maybe the wages won't exactly double and everything because you might have one of the spouses might be taking care of kids and whatnot and all that kind of stuff. But that is that. And then the head of household, of course, is in the middle. It's between the 12,950 and the 25,900 at the 19,400. And that's the general kind of layout. Married filing separately usually bounces back to that 12,950. Although you have that caveat, if one of the spouses is itemizing, that's gonna require the other spouse to kind of follow suit. You can't have one itemizing and one standardizing. So from a practical standpoint then, the question is often going to be, okay, is someone going to itemize or not? Now we'll, di we'll dive into the- I will dive in, swim around it. Itemized deductions later, but if they're nowhere near being able to itemize, then usually it's not worth your time to go through all the itemized deductions because they will be taking the standard deduction. Many more people fall into that kind of category these days because they tried to simplify the code by basically increasing the standard deduction. So basically most people take it. So if we go into the itemized, just to take a look at it, it's on the schedule A, and you can see the different categories for itemizing. And these are the types of deductions often coming to mind when you first think about like deductions. You got the medical and dental, you got the taxes you pay, like real estate taxes. You've got the interest, like the mortgage interest. You've got the gifts to charity, charitable contributions, and casualty and other uh, deductions down below. Now note the big thing that you're gonna ask uh, if people are gonna push over from itemizing uh, from standard to taking an itemized is the interest, whether they own a home. In other words, do they own a home? If they own a home, then they're probably got a mortgage on it. If they have a mortgage on it, then the interest on the mortgage is the big one that often pushes a lot of people over. I'm foreclosing the mortgage. And that in conjunction and alignment with the fact that you're gonna have property taxes on it as well. So the home, 
will lead to two big items, property taxes and the uh, mortgage interest. And if you're in a state where uh, the homes are, are much more expensive uh, type of area, just because cost of living is higher, like California or New York or something, then it's likely that the, the house is higher uh, in terms of cost, the loans higher, and then owning a home can kick people over quite easily. If you're in other parts of the country where it's, there's reasonable prices actually for a home, then, then the standard deduction is such that you still could find situations where people are taking the standard deduction and you wanna really understand that because a lot of times when you talk to like real estate brokers and whatnot, they're gonna they're gonna say, well, you get this big tax benefit, but we'll we'll talk that about more of it when we get into that area. But just realize that the the benefit might not be as big as you think because you have to consider the gap between your standard deduction and your itemized deduction. So although you get this big itemized deduction, if your standard deduction was pretty close to it before, you might not be getting as much of the, of a of a difference than you would otherwise think, and you have to actually run a tax projection to figure that out, but we'll talk more about that later. So then, so so if you're, if you don't know which one they're gonna be able to take, you're gonna have to collect all the information. Also, if someone got into some bad medical situation, hospital bills and stuff like that, then the medical stuff in and of itself might push someone over, but there's restrictions to the AGI limitations on the medical. So that's it's usually the home that pushes people over, okay. So let's get back to the standard deductions here. Here's the 12,950. I could double check that on my little worksheet in Excel where I put $100,000 in for the W-2 wages, pulling in here, no above the line items. And then the standard deduction is the 12,950. There's the 12,950 in our table, it being pulled from there. And that's gonna give us then our 8,750 there's our 8750. I depend on the tax software to do the calculation of the 14774. And there's the 14774. And then we had the <clears throat> tax payment of the 15,000 getting us to the 226. Uh, We're mainly focused here on the first half though, which is just the calculation of the income tax. Now let's just have the same income and double it up to being married with the same 100,000 income. So now we're at married filing joint here and we have another a spouse. So uh, Mr. Anderson got married, which is nice. And so now we can scroll down and say, we got the same 100,000. So note when getting married, it's, it's possible that the incomes could likely double or something like that, or at least go up, but it's not uh, required that that would be the case. So let's just keep it at the same 100,000 for now. And then the standard deduction doubles which is kind of what you would expect to happen because again, you don't wanna disincentivize marriage. Marriage is usually gonna be a benefit for the tax codes because of their, the, the fact that they're trying to uh, accommodate it as if the two people got together and they had they both had the same amount of income, right? You don't expect to make the same amount of money. You double the income because then they basically double the standard deduction and they have uh, similar kind of adjustments to the actual tax count calculation tables. But again, if you're on the low income side of things, the tax code can actually disincentivize marriage by not allowing some of the things that you might get like with the refundable credits, like the earned income tax credit and the child tax credit can get kind of messy. You, can, you could imagine situations where uh, it doesn't turn out to be a benefit. So in any case, if I go back to the equation here, all that's happening is now I'm up in the married filing joint to the 25.9. So there's the 25.9 getting us to that 74.1. So the 74.1 on page one is here. And then on page two, the tax calculation is now lower because one, the tax is lower, but also two, we're using different tables for married instead of single. So eight, eight, four, Eight four, uh, eight, four, 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 right? That would be that. Now you can imagine a situation that if they got married, then the income would double. Again, it's probably not likely that you're gonna, you know, that it would double. I mean, maybe, I mean, but, but usually one spouse ha earns more than the other. I'm not gonna get into who earns more or whatnot. And it's might be likely that after marriage, one of the spouses 
is going to take time, you know, with kids, which means they're not going to be able to work as much, you would think. But let's say that it doubled here to W2 and say we had 100,000 and, and do that. So if I go back on over, now we've got a 200,000 because now we have two people combined in the married uh, tax return, the 25,900 that gets us to the 174, 100. If I mirror that on my, on my little worksheet, I'm going to say this is W to employer two, 100,000. And we'll pull that back onto the first page for 200,000. That gets us to the 174, 100. And so 174, 100. And then on page two, the tax is now 29, 536. So 29, 29, 536. So there we have that. So again, the key points you just want to remember if I if you go from married to uh, single to married is you're going to say, okay, well, if 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 they're single, you've got the 12,950. If they were to get married, you're going to double the standard deduction generally. But you have to also consider the fact that you could possibly have two incomes that are coming together. Or you can just think of if you're looking at a married couple, that it would be the standard deduction 12,950 times two, uh, 25,900. And there's usually also going to be an impact on the tax calculations because the whole progressive tax tables will have to change uh, for married couple versus single. Okay, let's go to head of household now. So now I'm going to I'm going to remove uh, one going back to a single person, but then add a dependent, which is usually the thing that's required to push someone up to a head of household. Okay, so now we're head of household here, and so we've got Mr. Anderson. And then you would expect normally, as we talked last time or in a prior presentation, we, when we ran scenarios for qualifying for a head of household, that you would have a dependent as part of the qualifications. Doesn't necessarily have to be one that qualifies for a child tax credit or anything, but one that would qualify to push someone up to the head of household. So then I'm back to the 100,000 here. And now the standard deduction is at the 19,400, the 19,400. Okay, so if I go back on over and I was just to mirror that in my Excel worksheet, I would delete the second W-2 and the standard deduction I'm gonna say is now equivalent to the 19,400, which will bring us down to the 80,600 of the tax. 80,600 page two then calculates the tax at 11,855. So I'm gonna say, all right, <clears throat> 11,855. I'm losing my voice again. No, don't go, voice, I need you. Okay, it's okay, my voice won't go. My voice loves me. All right, let's do a, let's do a, a, a qualifying survivor spouse here, just to round things out. So now we're at qualifying survivor spouse. We've got uh, the Neo here, Mr. Anderson. And uh, we're gonna say, remember that the, the year of death, we're gonna say wasn't in the the 2022 but some in the prior uh, year we'll say for our example because if the death happened of the spouse in 2022 they would still be married filing joint typically so but but now it's the year after and they qualify because they have a dependent as well so they don't bounce back to single but rather or head of household but rather get the beneficial status of the surviving spouse and so we're still at the 25,900 as opposed to bouncing back to a single file at the 12,950 or head of household uh, 19,400. So m remember if you're single, if you're unmarried, the best, the, the worst status is filing single because then you get the 12,950. Better than that, uh, 19,400 if you're head of household but you'd need a dependent, better than that, would be that you're a qualified widow, widower, or surviving spouse, whatever they call it now. But obviously you would have to <laughs> have had a spouse that died, which would be a tragic situation and usually a qualifying uh, dependent in that situation for that to be covered. All right, now let's go back and say that we're over uh, 65. So if they're older than 65, that'll typically bounce us over to using the 1040 SR instead of the standard uh, 1040. But if you're using tax software, you can often still kind of look at the form 1040 because it has the layout that might be a little bit more familiar to you. So if I go to the form 1040, single filer, Mr. Anderson, 
And then we've got the checkbox down here. We're born before January 2nd, 1958. In essence, over uh, 65. We've got the 100,000. And then down here, we've got the standard deduction is now at the 14.7. So if I was to kind of review this using my Excel worksheet, I might end up going, okay, this, I, I would think they were single, but no, the software saying that it should be bumped up here because they're over 65. So I've said, it's, okay, it's gonna be this plus that added for single and head of household 1,750 because they bumped up to uh, the 14,700. So that gives us to the 85,300. So I can say, okay, 85,300. So that looks good. You can also see that of course on the uh, 1040 SR, which has just a little bit lo different looking feel, US tax return for seniors, uh, single, and down here's the checkbox. We're born before January 2nd, 1958. So there we have it. And we get down to, so it's a little bit different of a calculation. There's the 14.7 and there's the uh, 85,300. So the 85,300 that we got to. Now, if you wanna find those, because remember the standard deductions are on the first page. If they, if they didn't have those added standard uh, deductions, are kind of listed out right here. Uh, but if you go to the form 1040 SR and the page four, there's where you have your, your single standard deduction uh, and the number of boxes checked, one box is checked. So now you're at that 14,700. If two boxes were checked, meaning you're single over 65 and blind, then it would be to that 16,450. If married, then you've got the married couple. So one box versus two versus three versus four, because you could have one spouse be, uh, be over 65 or, or two spouses over 65. And both of those spouses could also have, be blind, right? Those are the four possibilities you have in that situation, uh, qualifying surviving spouse and head of household and so on and so forth. So let's add that if they're blind, it's a tragic situation here and we'll up, this over and say that uh, they're blind. So now I'm gonna go, okay, forms. I like to start at the 1040 just to, cause it's easier for me to see, I'm more used to it. And so I can say, okay, now two boxes are checked. Uh, you were born before uh, 19, January 2nd, 1958 and are blind. So now the deduction is going up to 16,450. So if I was on my Excel worksheet, I'd say, okay, now there's two of these. <clears throat> that were increased to the 16,450 to get us to the taxable uh, income income of the 83,550. So there's the 83,550, which of course you can see on the form 1040 SR uh, as well. So there's the, the single status and we're gonna say on page two, there's the 16,450, there's the taxable income 83,550. Now, if we had a married couple, I'm just to see another combination because there's more combos. If they're married and they're both over 65 and one of them uh, was blind, now I'm going to say, okay, so so the were born before January 2nd, 19. Our blind spouse was born before, but not blind. So now we've got the standard deduction at the 30,100. If I go back on over, I would say, okay, normally it would be the married filing joint, but then I'm gonna add the 1,400 for one spouse plus 1,400 for the other spouse plus 1,400 because one of the spouses were blind. Blind. And that's gonna get us to the 30,100, getting us to the taxable income of the 69.9. There's the 69.9. You can see that on the 1040 SR as well, married filing joint. There's our check boxes, three out of four being checked off on page two. Then we can see the 30,100, the 69,9 uh, there, 69,9 there. And then again, if I look at page four, now if I was married filing joint, there's the 30,100 because three out of the four kind of added categories have been checked off. Both of them over 65, one out of the two blind. And just jumping back to the uh, married filing separate status, uh, remember that if married filing separate, you could have some restrictions. So 
restriction structure. So for example, if I go back to married filing separate and I scroll down, then typically that would take you back down to the the standard for the single filer which is the 12,950 but you could imagine a situation where one of the spouses is, is itemizing in which case you would have to force the itemizing of this spouse possibly for married filing separate and that of course can have a, a big impact on on the taxes when you're thinking about what someone can do married filing joint versus a married filing separate so remember that when you get into the weeds of a married uh, couple and they're like, should we file married filing separate? There's kind of a couple questions. The one is, would it be beneficial from a tax standpoint? Usually it's not. Usually married filing joint would be better. And then you have other questions that, that may lead them to want a married filing joint uh, or separate. And then if one is itemizing, that could complicate the situation uh, as well. And if you're living in community property uh, states that also could be different or is different in terms of the calculation from a non-community property state so just make sure that uh, you've got you know those things kind of straightened out and that that someone can't really go from married filing joint just back to single married filing separate is not the same as single or jumping back to basically like head head of household there's usually going to be restrictions to married filing separate that may not be there if you were head of household or single filing status. So those are the general uh, concepts.